Redditors who have hired a private investigator, what did you find out? My story is a little different. I had a pie investigate me. About 6 years ago I became very ill with a variety of issues. That left me really quite poorly. I was an optician, and so using my hands with arthritis was just never going to be a plan. So I applied for, you, k, disability support. I sailed through, and started receiving a monthly amount. Now, fast forward a few years, I then start getting restless at home, so I retrain into a job that doesn't involve my hands. I stop receiving money, except for the benefit you can get while you work, I use it for paying a better automatic car off. Well, my very nasty mother's friend saw me start work and called the benefits office, assuming I was still claiming. Unfortunately, she exaggerated and told them I was living a normal life and even running daily. So the benefits office filmed and watched me. They thought they had an aha. Gotcha. Moment. Their pie provided photos of me walking unaided when I sat in the meeting. With a lot of smug fraud officers and my solicitor I felt sick to my stomach. I really couldn't work out WTF was going on. They were trying to make it look like I had been running and jogging, but I knew I walked never any further than 5 meters to my car. Anyway, solicitor pointed out the photos were screenshots of a video. Asked for the videos. Videos were of me, struggling to walk. One of them, I rest on my car before opening my door. Another I was going into a supermarket and had replaced my cane with the trolley to lean on. You get the picture. So, the fraud team basically said to ops, and I never heard from them again. I spend a lot of my time trying to appear normal and it bit me in the ass. And never trust these fraud TV shows now either. This stuff makes me so angry. I have a relative who has serious disabilities and the shit the assessors try to pull to prove they don't need support is astounding. Like greeting them at a meeting. Pretty much at the door. With how are you? To which the British reflex is to say fine. Most Brits would say they were fine if they had a leg hanging off and were on fire. Then they make copious notes of how my relative said they were fine. I was in hospital after nearly dying from a necrotic appendix. Could barely move and was fairly incoherent. Doctor said morning. How are you? Apostrophe. I said fine thanks. How are you? The reflex is real. My law firm had a bad faith insurance case several years ago. A guy had gotten hurt at work. He claimed he was disabled because he hurt his back and could not lift anything or really engage in any type of physical activity. His disability insurance carrier failed to handle the claim and paid him what was owed. There was a potential for relatively large damages. In fact, the carrier filed in the court case what is known as an offer to confess judgment. It's a way of agreeing to let judgment be taken for that amount. The plaintiff can accept the offer or reject it. However, if he rejects the offer he is responsible for the defendant's attorney's fees. If the verdict ends up being less than the amount of the offer to confess judgment, the offer in this case was $750. 000. He rejected the offer. A few weeks later our pie found out that the plaintiff bowled every week. The pie got video of the plaintiff bowling and copies of his score sheets going several years back through the date of the accident. It was clear he really was not disabled. He also found that plaintiff had been in a car wreck and was making identical injury claims to the other driver's insurance carrier. We filed a motion with the court to dismiss the lawsuit based upon fraud and perjury. The court set the motion for a hearing. But before that happened the plaintiff dismissed his lawsuit. So the guy turned down dollar sign 750k! Exclamation mark. Only to get nothing? Question mark? Exclamation mark. Less than nothing. He had to pay for their lawyers. Every penny. Plus his own. So long as the lawyers cost less than 750 dollars. 000. Those fees would likely include everything for the pie. As well. So. In the end. He paid for a guy. To catch him committing fraud. I was a private investigator for a little bit. Most work pies do. Is searching financial slash court records and serving documents. But one time I was paid by wealthy parents. To stake out their college senior who had stopped returning their calls. They were worried about her. These parents paid like dollar sign 40k for round the clock monitoring, just to find out their daughter dropped out of school 
and was a full-time ski bum. BTW stakeouts are mostly just sitting in your car eating all day. I have always wondered, how do you pee discreetly on a stakeout? I would like to know the answer to this. I'd also like to know, if you're eating in your car, how do you make sure you don't miss something happening? Like I imagine glancing up every so often. But what if the person you're investigating moves while you're not glancing up? I had a girlfriend that worked for one for a while. She said that the majority of their work was insurance scams. She took a lot of pictures of guys who said they were hurt on the job playing golf and surfing and such. There seems to be a lot of that in this thread. Sometimes I wonder if I'd be able to pull off such a scam. Because any investigator would only be able to determine that after the accident I didn't post my life on social media and I almost never engaged in strenuous activity outside the house. So no change there then. Not me but my grandfather did. He was separated from his brother when the Japanese occupied China. My grandfather safely made it to Hong Kong and eventually to Canada. His brother made it to Singapore or Malaysia according to family friends back then. So my grandfather spent a good 5 years or so working with a pie to find his brother so they can be reunited. Sadly, with just a picture and the fact many people died in the war, it wasn't much to go on. My grandfather is still alive and always thinks of his brother. It's his wish to see him one more time. AWW man that's heartbreaking. Have you tried posting online do you recognize this man? With the image and a brief story? No. My grandpa is 83 to 84 this year. This happened when he was a little boy, maybe 7 to 9 years old. The reason why I'm giving ranges is because back then many people were so poor that they didn't keep track of birthdays. And my grandfather's dad had to make up a fake birthday for him when they arrived on HK. The brother is older by a few years. Not sure how much older because my grandpa doesn't really like to talk about him. The only picture my grandpa had is of them when they were kids. The pie had to rely on the picture. Family last name. A few nicknames the brother had and word of mouth from other Chinese families from the same village. It's not surprising he wasn't successful in the search. My grandfather made several trips to E-S Asia to do the search himself. My sister, mid 30s, is adopted and hired one to find her estranged biological father. They came back saying that not only was he still alive and nearby, but he had a daughter, meaning she also had a biological sibling. Further digging from the pie uncovered that they weren't just similar ages either. They were exactly the same age. The evidence suggested that my sister had a twin and her birth father had taken the twin and vanished. Huge, life-changing news. Eventually, through more incredible detective work, the pie realized that the daughter was actually just my sister. There was no other sibling, and they had just been investigating my sister the whole time accidentally, needless to say. We asked for the money back. TL. Doctor. Sister hired a private investigator. Private investigator accidentally investigated sister. Well. Did you get the money back? I think we got some of it back. Yeah. To be fair to the pie. They did find the guy with very little to go on before the fuss started. To be more fair though, a few years later I found him again. Myself. After an hour on the internet. My grandmother's first boyfriend after my grandfather died said he was a retired cop and a veteran. They enjoy dancing to country music together and bought a new car. In her name though, even though she can't drive anymore, my uncle sired a pie. Turns out, that old bastard had a habit of shacking up with widows and bleeding them dry. The boyfriend not the pie, not me but my friend, also a lawyer like myself, was handling a contested will, normally. Very very straightforward. Anyway, woman in her mid 30s husband just died. He was in his late 70s or early 80s. Can't remember. Still nothing fishy because hey. Nothing wrong with an adult transaction where a very good looking young woman sleeps with a rich old man in exchange for the use of his credit cards. Here's where it gets slightly concerning. Two months before his death. He rewrote his will and left everything. To her instead of his five kids. Around 35 meters in cash and assets. And then it gets downright thriller movie ish Turns out. The woman is a five time widow. Now you may be saying. Sure. That could just be the unluckiest. Most pitiful widow in the world. 
but it gets even fisher. In all five of her marriages, the wills were rewritten just months before their deaths, and every cause of death was natural causes despite not all of them being as old as the latest husband, and toxicology tests were not carried out during any of the five autopsies. But wait. There's more. It turned out that the widow was never home during any of the deaths, yet insisted the autopsies were carried out at the same institute. But wait. Still more. Widow is also distantly related to one of the higher ups at the institute. My mom's best friend. She divorced her husband and was awarded full custody of their daughter. His family was a shit show. He kidnapped his daughter and he and his parents just disappeared. This was easier in 1977 than it is now. Closed bracket. She tried hiring a pie but couldn't afford one. So she started learning how to trace people on her own. In the days before the internet, she spent years doing this whenever she wasn't waitressing. She did find her daughter in 81. But by this time her daughter was poisoned. Against her, mom's friend went on to get her pie license and was a pie specializing in women's issues for the next two decades. I don't know what happened to her after that. If she's alive, she would be in her 80s I think. Had a babysitter we thought was stealing from us. Luckily our neighbor was a pie couple and they ran a background check for $10. Babysitter had a string of DUIs and a few days before a large fine was due. My camera disappeared. He also stole money from my kids piggy banks. He sort of disappeared, but was also really into Instagram, so I surreptitiously followed him. He started babysitting again for a single mom, easy target, and posted a lot of fun pics with this family. I tracked down the mom and sent her a long email detailing out his whole scam. She said we were right and it was clear he'd been stealing from her business. He has since gone underground, but I still google him regularly to see what he's up to. Has been able to avoid arrests for a while now. Good thing he was gone before anything worse happened. So I learned a lot about con artists from this experience. He was not a child molester and was a genuinely nice and likable person. Very talented photographer and really good with kids. It was almost as if he thought he deserved what he stole because he had such a big heart. When I say he targeted single moms he genuinely helped them as well by watching their kids and going the extra mile to be helpful. It was a very complex situation and I think that's common with these cases. People truly like the con artist and feel almost embarrassed to have been taken advantage of so they often just go unreported. Hadn't heard from my mom since I was about 15, very unstable due to drugs and alcohol etc. When I was 29 I decided it was time to find out what happened to her. I figured if she was a Jane Doe somewhere then I could put her to rest. And if she was alive then I wanted to let her know that I forgave her. Hired a pie to help. I guess she was moved by my story. And so she also ran info for the man my mother was apparently married to on the house and with one clue from his report I was able to track them down. I wouldn't have found my mom alive and was just starting out on recovery after being homeless and addicted for many many years if it wasn't for the pie who kindly ran an extra report for free. Mom has remained sober now for about 7 years and is probably the healthiest she's ever been. Physically and emotionally. My mother's dad walked out on mom. My aunt and my grandmother when mom was just 5. A few years later, my grandmother died of a grand mal seizure. Mom was taken in by her grandparents, but she always wondered why her dad left and what became of him. In her 40s, she saved up a bit and hired a pie to track him down. Turns out he moved over time from Pittsburgh to California where he wound up in prison for armed robbery and so he other violent crimes. He died in St. Quentin Penitentiary. I think mom got a lot of closure out of that. She was able to see that life would have most likely been even worse had he stayed. At least living with her grandparents. She was loved and raised to fulfill her potential. I know somebody who was like an assistant to the actual pie. She basically went to bingo with a camera in her purse to capture video of a woman. The woman claimed that a car accident had completely immobilized her. But she would take off the neck brace all the time. Playing bingo hours on end. Nothing exciting. Just capturing fraud. Wait. She took it off. To play bingo? Yeah man you've never played hardcore bingo? When I met my wife, she seemed to have a normal modern family. 
two moms, two dads. Over time it became apparent her stepdad wasn't around much. Holidays. Birthdays. You name it. Head pop in to say hi. Grab a nap. Whatever. Then take off again. My wife's family thought this was normal. Just the way it had always been. Since they were teenagers. He claimed to have a job following FedEx trucks around the state to prevent theft and drug trafficking. But I thought it strange and started making jokes about him having another family. Well, I guess it got my sister-in-law thinking because she gets a favor from the Pyatt her law firm. Sure enough, he has not two but three wives around the state and five other step children between them. My sister-in-law breaks the news to her mother, who immediately changes the locks and files for divorce. They never speak again. Cold turkey. Divorce is even uncontested. As a foo they also send the report to his other wives. That's disgusting. Also exhausting. Yeah. Duck all that. There's no way I could handle another family, let alone two more. Even in 2020 I struggled to picture a private investigator as anything but a man in a beige trench coat and a trilby. That's the only pie image I've had as I've been reading through the comments laugh. I used to work for an insurance defense firm years ago. Best pie story I have is where we hired one to tail a guy who was suing our client for an injury that wasn't entirely our client's fault. The guy was refusing to settle and was insisting on going to trial, even though we offered a fair sum that would have paid his medical bills. The pie we hired got some good pics that showed the plaintiff was nowhere near as injured as he claimed. But the crown jewel of the photos was one where the guy was walking on a pier with a woman who wasn't his wife, had his hand on her butt and everything. Later in a deposition, the attorney slid the picture to the plaintiff and said something like Mr. Smith, obviously not his real name. Who is the woman in this picture? Question mark? We would like to schedule a deposition with her as well. The guy went ghost white and told his attorney he wanted to settle. At least he was smart enough to realize that if his wife found out the other woman was gonna be deposed, he was gonna have to get a family law attorney as well. Because the divorce papers would soon follow. My wife and I are friends with a lot of bar owners and bartenders because of her job. We knew this one owner slash tender. We will call him Dana. That was the nicest looking guy. Like, if he knew you were sick, he would cover your shift at your bar and then give you the tips he made that night. Just the best guy. Then one night we are drinking with another bartender friend. Ben. Ben lets us know that Dana has brain cancer. Has been keeping it quiet. But Ben has been giving him money, upwards of $5.000, for treatment. My wife and I were about to give money to Ben to pee button. N. Then Dana's business partner got suspicious and hired a pie to follow Dana on a day he took off for medical reasons. Turned out Dana spent the day drinking at another bar. Ah. No doctor visits. S. The business partner confronts Dana who comes clean. N. He did not have cancer. Ah. He was. Just saying that to get money from his friends. Apparently lots of bartenders had been giving him money. Dana is more or less run out of town. He moved to a different city. And I know he slowly paid Ben back. But it took a couple years. I'm not sure what happens to him since. Would you consider hiring a pie to find out where he's at? Kidding of course. Doesn't seem worth the money and glad he didn't get yours. I'm pretty sure I know what city he is in. Just don't care to speak to him. Thank you for watching. We hope you enjoyed this video. Please subscribe for more videos.